Every time before I close my suitcase, I say a little prayer and hopefully this thing actually closes. Been on the road for about a month. Now entering the final leg of my journey. Gonna hit to Los Angeles today. Uh, tomorrow I'm flying back to New York, see my parents. And then going back to Texas and trying to kind of figure out what to do with my life. Kind of heavy, trying to make some big decisions. But before all that, I'm starving and, and Justin just sent me a message about this must try barbecue in Las Vegas. And apparently they open at nine o'clock in the morning. So. Breakfast barbecue it is. One final look. Don't know when I'll be able to see all this again. Finding any sort of cover parking in Las Vegas, incredibly difficult. They barely exist. And I kind of made a mistake today. I should have just stayed in my hotel room, but I thought the barbecue I was going to opens at nine. It actually opens at 11. Only the butcher shop was opens at nine. So I got to kill a couple of hours. And I think this is, uh, this is a good place to do it. Voted best waffles. Morning. Nordic waffles. That's good. Yeah, I'll do the best of Las Vegas waffle and I'll do, you said the cold shrimp sandwich? Yeah. Okay. The last time I had Nordic food, I was uh, I was in Sweden. This was way before I started doing YouTube. And I was in Sweden for a nonprofit human rights thing. And a local friend of mine took me to a smorgasbord or a Swedish buffet. And the featured meat they had on that buffet was reindeer. This was also around Christmas time. And I remember feeling just nauseous eating that because I love Christmas. I remember feeling so bad eating reindeer. But don't worry, they, they don't have reindeer here. It's too hot for reindeers here. Las Vegas, reindeers never come here. I don't really even know how to handle this sandwich. First of all, it is so pretty. Here's a better perspective of how big the sandwich is. I think I need the Jaws dim sum. Mm hmm. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's a big sandwich. I have to eat barbecue after this. My only solace is that the waffle seems pretty thin and not as intimidating. I don't know how to eat this. I think you gotta just knife and fork it. This is so good. First of all, this bread is delicious. Oh my gosh, oh, the shrimp is falling. Mmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. the shrimp is splendid. So tender and naturally sweet. The touch of lemon juice works so well because there's so much cheese and meat on this spread. Everything tastes so fresh and healthy, which is something I, I really never experienced much in Vegas. Mm. So this thing is pretty much a salad and a sandwich in one. Bread is so aromatic. And this whole thing looks really heavy. Hmm, really goes down so easily. This thing looks intimidating. Not at all. <laughs> lingo berries. I think the only time I've ever had lingo berries was in Ikea. I just love saying the name. Lingo berries. This waffle is super thin. Ah, that's good. I don't know about you, but my favorite part of a waffle is the crispy out part anyway. So this waffle pretty much just gives you that. And it's much chewier than a regular waffle. Mmm. Oh, really good. And different toppings on each different quadrant. This is definitely one of the more interesting foods I've had in Vegas. Mm. If you're in Vegas, you want to try something different? Something a little fresher, a little healthier? Still super delicious. If you're wondering what Nordic food tastes like, it's a good place. It's about quarter past 10, so when I get to the barbecue place, it should be almost open. Also, what I really liked about that place, owner is super nice. The whole place is really clean and comfortable. So my drive is gonna be about 30 minutes. I, I think I mentioned this before. Driving in Las Vegas, I feel like even driving 10 minutes in Las Vegas feels like a two hour drive. And the whole time you're just like dodging the sun. I don't know if anybody else does this. I'm just in the car trying to like contour my body so my arms are just within that little bit of shade so I don't get burned up. Anyway, 30 minutes. This is gonna be a long drive.
Roadkill Grill. There we are. Place your water and you step inside and they're literally butchering the meat right over there. It smells great. Oh, my barbecue. I haven't had barbecue since Texas. Spicy barbecue sauce. I think this is uh, potato salad. Cornbread, maybe? And the three meat combo. After moving to Texas, my expectation of what a good barbecue is has dramatically increased. And I still think Texas barbecue is the best barbecue in this country. Mmm. Wow. That is a good potato salad. All right, this is the cornbread. Mm-hmm. Okay. Spicy barbecue sauce is great. A little sweet, not too spicy. A little vinegary. This is what I was told is the best thing. The hot links here. That is really good. This, this is really delicious. Very, very snappy. The heat is, I feel like sort of mild, but the link is peppery, it's meaty, so juicy inside. And after you eat about three or four, you start feeling the burn on your tongue. All right, hot link is 100% a winner. Potato salad is astonishingly good. Let's see how the ribs are. Yeah, that's delicious. It's not gonna be the juiciest ribs, but they are tender and smoky. These ribs kind of reminds me of the ribs I had at Snow's Barbecue. Mm. Okay, I'm not so sure about this brisket though. Fatty side's delicious. Flavor's good. Not too much smoke in this brisket. It's okay. It's thinly sliced, so it's still relatively tender, but that thing's a drag. Hollings are 100% the best thing here. Smoked ribs, I actually really like. Barbecue sauce is tremendous, but the brisket, unfortunately, is his weakest link. Mm. I would come just for the hotlings, though. It's that good. Mm. Final meal here in Las Vegas. I really have no idea when I'll ever be back again. It's been 110, 120 degrees every single day I've been here. I'm actually really excited to start driving to Los Angeles and see the temperatures start going down. Well, viva Las Vegas. Let's go to LA. Okay, this is kind of interesting. You guys remember like I, I was driving by the largest gas station in California and I didn't stop in because it didn't look that fancy. Well, today let's go in because I'm a little hungry. Let's see if we can grab some food and check this place out and see how it compares to the largest gas station in Texas, Bucky's. Yeah, ever since I went to Bucky's, I'm kind of really curious now about giant gas stations. So, Eddie's World, there. I wonder if anyone lives in that giant Sunday. Eddie World is the largest gas station in California. Whoa. That is big. This is a gigantic gas station. What? Beanie Babies. Candy, snacks, more candies. What is this? It's like a spoon popsicle? Tons of stuffed animals. Oh, jerky. This apparently is the theme right here. It's just googly eyes, stuffed animals, and unicorns everywhere. So this area just looks like more snacks and candy. This is just a giant candy store. It's all this. It's candy. Candy. Candy, 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 candy. This is like made for kids. Stuffed animals and candy. It's basically the store. Coffee, refreshments, caramel corn, homemade ice cream over here. Oh, hot sauces. Fungal pops. All right, here's the food. There's Eddie's Pizza, and then there is whatever this whole food section is. Okay, this might be good. So it says for the pizza, they make their they make everything from scratch, even their dough, and their burgers and chicken, apparently never frozen, only fresh meat, and they make their own sauces. As seemingly cool as this place is, I would not want to be here by myself. At some point, it just feels like 
something's always staring at you. I got a pizza, a burger, and asked for a recommendation. They recommended chicken tenders. Got that as well. It's pretty cool. Look at the pizza oven they have back there. Those are pretty legitimate pizza ovens. These are really good looking sandwiches they're making. I should have got a sandwich. I mean, how good can a chicken tender be? That's a pretty big gas station. I think if it wasn't the fact for the fact that I've been to Bucky's, I think I would have been really impressed by that. Pizza, a burger, and they recommended chicken tenders, which I don't really understand, but I am a sucker for recommendations. So here is the pizza. This is about $11 for a personal sized pizza. And they do make even the dough in house. So pretty impressive for a gas station. It's not a bad pizza. Cheese is actually real. Crust is thin, it's cooked on a real fire. That's pretty really good. I mean, if you're stuck between Vegas and Los Angeles, you wanted some top decent pizza, this place got it. Definitely the best gas station pizza I've ever had. This is the burger. And I think I might have made a mistake with this burger. I didn't read the descriptions that well. Um, I just read that it had like jalapeno. This thing is apparently made with Carolina Reaper chilies in the burger. The spiciest chilies in the world. Well, let's see. Oh, that burns. That burns in the most unholy way possible. Oh, this is not good. You can see the bits of chili inside this burger. It's a little misleading because when you first start chewing it, it actually tastes pretty good. The cheese is really yummy, it's creamy. Pickle jalapenos are nice. And then it feels like you just lick the outside ground with your tongue. And that's where the Carolina Reapers come in. Why couldn't they have just made a burger that was spicy and not diabolical? Is that too much to ask? Burger actually really delicious. Just maybe don't get the one I got. Or if you do, at least get it in the winter time. I can still handle it though. Let me just jump to the chicken tender. Because they really recommended this thing. So they make their own sauces. And this is a spicy chipotle. Their homemade sauce is delicious. Spicy, smoky, and ever so creamy. And give you a biscuit. A little too sweet for me. I feel like the chicken tenders is really helped by how good the sauce is. By the way, I think this is a Cajun Chipotle actually. The sauce is amazing. They're good chicken tenders but paired with amazing sauce. So then they average out to be great chicken tenders. Mm. When you stop by this place, buy things that will touch the sauce. I'm gonna get a slice of pizza and dunk into the sauce. Mm. Their homemade sauce is everything. I know this place is fairly new. I wonder if the, there's a trend of building like super big gas stations across America. And that could be kind of like our answer to the 7-Elevens for the awesome convenience stores in Asia. If that is the case, I am super on board with that. This is a good place. A little too many dolls, but good place. All right, next up, Los Angeles. Oh, how cool. Even the Five Stars hotels I was staying at didn't have these automatic butt cleaners. Oh, it's a really nice bathroom. This is a brand new hotel, I think, like I said. Oh, that's really, really neat. And it is, of course, in a very predominantly Asian neighborhood. That's probably why they have it. Ah, should be fun going for a run later. All right, I'm gonna wash up, then let's go grab some dinner. Wow, I think I've forgotten what 70 degree temperature felt like. Oh, it feels so good. I heard really good things about this place. This is like an old school lobster place. I've always said, like, Asian way of cooking lobster is just the best. Happy food day to me. Remember that thing I did with that sandwich? With that Jaws thing? I think I played that a little early, so let's do it now. Dunno, 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 dunno. This is a small lobster and noodle. I don't know what I was thinking. 
should have got a large. This is so beautiful. Small lobster cooked in, this is their signature sauce. Well, it looks like scallions, jalapenos, chilies. Again, this is the smallest version you can get. And they say this is a three, four pound lobster sitting on top of garlic noodles. Isn't this so much better? than just steaming it, we're boiling it, we're dipping it in some butter or cocktail sauce. This is how you want your lobster. Trust me, this is how you want your lobster. Wow. I can't believe I've never been to this place before. Look at this thing. Mmm. Oh, that is good. They combine so many flavors and seasoning into the sauce. There's tons of garlic, peppers, chilies. And when you take a bite of the lobster, you can chase it with some scallions which makes it even better and more aromatic. Garlic noodles. Mm. Oh, that's buttery. Oh, actually, so I don't think it's garlic noodles. I think it's just butter noodles. Ain't nothing wrong with that. If you want garlic, add some of the stuff they put on the lobster onto your noodles. Also, I got some veggies. Xiao dou miao, stir fry sprouts. Mm. Oh, so nice. A little garlic, a little oil. That's really all you need for that. This is so awesome. I still can't believe I never found this place before. That was good. And they brought over a... Good quintessential Chinese dessert. Sliced oranges. If you love lobster and you never had lobster Chinese style before, you haven't had lobster yet. I'm telling you that right now. This is one of the best ways to eat lobster. Good morning. I have 20 minutes exactly to finish all my food before I have to head off to the airport. So I'm at uh, Mian Nengia Middle House. Thank you so much for opening at uh, nine o'clock in the morning. Bunch of inners, some meatballs, pork, ground pork. Definitely give me a lot of soup though. Garlic and vinegar, chilies. Ah. Mm. I wanted to get that Mexican uh, cheese boiling bowl again, but that thing is like 20 minutes from here. Just don't have the time. Wish I woke up earlier. But this is really good though. Mm. Right, I gotta hurry. She in the bed. Uh, she wasn't enough. Quick bomb me for the road. Thank you. Thank you. Take care, buddy. All right, gotta go, gotta go, gotta go. I love Saved by the Bell, one of my favorite shows of all time. This podcast is actually pretty horrible. You know, when you listen to these rewatched podcasts like Fake Doctors, Real Friends, they reminisce about the show, they watch it, they're like, oh yeah, I remember this and that. I just gotta remember anything. But I still love the show, so I listen to this podcast. And also, I support my Asian brother. Yeah, Zach Morris, Mark Paul Gosser is half Asian. It's a base idea for uh, Violet, you know. Oh, finally back. I found this uh, person that actually drives back and forth from the airport back to the area around my house for a fairly good price. They're falling asleep driving though, I was so nervous. Ain't nothing like the smell of this house. All right, 1 a.m., I gotta go to bed. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.